Hi everybody, JJ here from Newegg Studios, and we're really excited to give you guys a little bit of a deeper dive into overclocking, specifically on AMD's latest AM4 platform and with the latest ASUS X370 series motherboard and the top of the line flagship 1800X Ryzen series CPU. So you can see right here in this system next to me, it's a pretty awesome looking gaming enthusiast system, but this thing could pretty much handle anything you throw at it, whether you're talking about advanced productivity, gaming, content creation, it doesn't matter. You've got enough cores and frequency in there to be able to have an absolutely smooth and responsive experience. But us being enthusiasts here, we of course want more performance. So we're gonna look to overclock the system and we're gonna actually show you how it easy it is to be able to overclock the system using our auto tuning technology, which is part of our five-way optimization suite. Now, before we actually get into the specifics of overclocking and some of the insights that you're gonna have for overclocking for a Ryzen series CPU, we wanna talk a little bit about the hardware that we're gonna be using for this overclock setup. So let's take a closer look here at the build. So you can see here, we've got our system set up and this is a pretty high-end system configuration. So like we talked about, we've got an 1800X Ryzen series CPU sitting on that X370 Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. We've got NZXT's Kraken X62 cooler. This is an absolutely beastly cooler. And of course it looks awesome because it's got that integrated RGB lighting. Now this is a 280 millimeter closed loop cooling solution. So we've got a lot of cooling performance to really be able to crank up the overclocking headroom that's gonna be available on our CPU. In terms of the memory, we've got some high performance RGB G-Skill uh, Trident Z series memory. So that's DDR4. It's gonna give us more than enough headroom so that after the CPU overclock if we're really looking to crank up the DDR frequency, we can do that. Uh, of course, we're rounding out the airflow configuration with a number of different NZXT Air R RGB series fans. Um, and then from there, the rest of the key components that we'd really be uh, specific to overclocking is at the heart of the system, but covered by the shroud is a Seasonic 850 watt prime series PSU, an absolutely top line PSU. It's gonna help to make sure that we've got a solid and stable platform, especially as we start to really push this system and put it under load. So let's jump into the desktop and get the overclocking started. So we're here on the desktop, and the first thing we want to quickly take a look at is going to be the core CPU stock frequency. So this is essentially our system 100% at bare bones stock. Now with ASU series motherboards, there is actually going to be an out of the box slight overclock that we automatically enable to even be able to give you a little bit better experience right out of the box. But to be able to guys show you the maximum level of overclocking potential that we can easily enable, we've gone ahead and set the system to 100% pure stock configuration. So we're going to quickly go ahead and open up the CPU-Z to be able to take a quick baseline of what the actual operating uh, frequency is at stock. So you can see here, of course, we've got a Ryzen series CPU and we've got Crosshair 6 Hero series motherboard. Now we can see right here that the baseline frequency is of course less than the total um, advertised frequency under load, which would be 3.4 gigahertz. So you can see that the CPU is stepping down to be able to conserve a little bit of power uh, using less voltage. So we're gonna just put a quick load onto this guy. So we're gonna open up Cinebench as a way to quickly be able to highlight uh, a load. We're just going to select the multi-core run for it and we'll open up Task Manager just so you guys can see uh, that it's loading it up. So we're gonna go ahead and launch that. You can see now the CPU is coming under load. The rendering is going to be happening here in the background. And if we move this over right here, you can see that our core frequency is right now about 3.4 gigahertz. So that's an outstanding frequency when you consider, of course, that you've got 16 threads. So that's a lot of threads, a lot of performance. You can even see, of course, the rendering speed of what we've got going on in Cinebench is quite impressive for this part. But we want to, of course, overclock this and take this to the next level. So let's go ahead and now jump into our AI Suite application and show you how we can easily overclock this Ryzen series CPU. So the first thing that we need to go ahead and do is launch our AI Suite 3. So we've already gone ahead and installed this. And this is, of course, our full system utility. It allows you to monitor voltages, configure fan speeds, overclock your system, and do a whole lot more. So it's really uh, one of the best ways to fully realize the value of what the Crosshair 6 brings to the table, as well as actually any of our X370 series motherboards. So since we want to focus on performance tuning, we're going to head over to 5-Way Optimization, which is the primary uh, suite that allows us to do one-touch overclocking. So we're gonna click into this and you're gonna see that you have quite a number of different options available to you, but it's extremely simple. Uh, we've got at the top two options for tuning, fast tuning and then extreme tuning. Extreme tuning is gonna allow us to have the most extreme level of overclocking. Um, and while it sounds aggressive, really what it just means is that it's going to be a dynamic real-time auto overclock. If we were to use the fast tuning option, it just applies a basic preset. And while that's a great way to easily and effectively overclock your system, it doesn't maximize uh, the possibility of what your CPU can allow for, as well as maximize with the different type of cooling solutions you might have or the higher quality power supply. Since we really wanna see what we can really get out of this series CPU, we're gonna select extreme tuning. Next right here, we've got stress test duration. 
uh, and excuse me, uh, stress test uh, allocation. This is going to allow us to go ahead and define how much of the stress test we want to balance between CPU as well as memory. For many users, I'd say the initial selection option is going to probably be pretty solid. If you find that you're running very demanding games or applications where you have a larger memory footprint, then you can go ahead and select accordingly to make sure that you have the right balance between how much CPU and how much memory is uh, tested for. Now keep in mind though that uh, having a, an aggressive CPU utilization with a heavy DRAM utilization may affect your maximum overclock. Next up here is going to be an option that we can adjust the actual duration for the stress test intervals. Now this is a full real-time auto overclocking implementation. This means that while it's running in the operating system, this is talking directly to the UEFI, or what some people refer to as the BIOS, to be able to make adjustments to the multiplier, to the voltage, all in real time. And as, as each increment is dynamically increased, uh, you can actually adjust how long you want the stress test to be run to ensure that that frequency is stable. Our baseline is only 15 seconds per each interval to be able to quick up uh, and speed up the overall overclocking process. And then I'd say about 80% of cases, 85% of cases, this is gonna leave you with an extremely reliable and solid overclock experience. But if you're somebody that really wants to hammer the system for an extended period of time and allow for the most heat generation, you might wanna select a longer duration. For some of those that really care absolutely about the best level of stability, I would set it to actually one hour between each increment and do this maybe before you go to bed. So uh, once you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, you could have possibly had maybe between four to five to maybe even eight hours of stress testing of your system. Next step up is going to be the CPU ratio stability. Essentially what this means is how aggressive do we want to target the actual overclock frequency. Are we looking to get the most aggressive highest level overclock where we might have a little bit of a lower level of stability or do we want to be able to maybe have a little bit more conservative frequency um, at, at the of course benefit of improved overall system stability. Choice is up to you. For most users the normal preset is going to be 100% fine to use. Last but not least is going to be a special option that we have available that's really beneficial for content creators. So users out there of applications like uh, DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere or any program that uses AVX instruction sets, these are extremely demanding and place quite a bit more stress on the CPU than traditional games or applications. If you want to be able to ensure that your system is stable for the most demanding scenarios that you can run on it, you're going to want to enable this AVX instruction set. Keep in mind though that this can generally come at the expense of your maximum CPU frequency overclock. Now last but not least are going to be three really awesome options for those of you that aren't really that knowledgeable about overclocking. You're going to have the easy ability to be able to go ahead and target um, values that are much more contextual. So one option is that say if you want to be able to target a specific level of voltage to be applied for your overclock, you can define your overclock in that fashion. If you want to pick a target frequency, let's say maybe uh, you know 4.4 gigahertz, then you can go ahead and select the target frequency that you want. And even though we don't know if your CPU can get to that, we'll attempt to automatically tune to that maximum frequency that you've defined. And if it can't get there, it's going to get as close as it can to that end result. The last option is one that's really interesting and it has to do with target temperature. For many users, they care about how hot their system gets, especially under load. And what you can do is, let's say, set it to something like 75 or 80 degrees. And what we'll do is we'll tune the overclock to be in line with that maximum temperature. So if you want to be able to prioritize how hot your system is getting and make sure your overclock doesn't get the system too hot, then this is a great option for you. Either which way, all these granular controls are simple and easy and ultimately very effective in terms of how they get executed by the system. So there are a couple of other options that we have here to be able to fully tune your system, such as automatic fan calibration and profiling, graphics card optimization, and power management optimization, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So we're just going to deselect these and uh, deselect here the graphics card option. We're gonna run back through the different parameters that we have right here, and we're gonna go ahead and click Start to go ahead and begin our overclocking process. So the system has gone ahead and now automatically restarted. You saw that there was actually a quick notification that a quick 8% overclock has already been applied to the system. So already we've applied a basic preset that we know is pretty much gonna work on all Ryzen uh, unlocked series CPUs. And from here, we're now gonna re-enter into the desktop and the operating system is now gonna begin the real-time dynamic auto overclocking process. Now, you won't need to do anything. This automatically happens all uh, without any type of end user interaction, but there'll be a lot of initial information that's displayed. So if you wanna get a little bit more insight into actually what's going on with your system, all you gotta do is take a look at the screen. So right now, of course, all our baseline applications are getting installed. 
uh, and they're uh, getting set up in terms of the operating system running. And in a moment, we're actually going to have our AI Suite 3 interface automatically come up and let us know that that baseline overclock has started. And then from there, it'll begin to continue through the automatic auto overclocking process. So you can see without us doing anything, we've been presented with a screen interface right here. So here within this interface, you can see the baseline frequency that we've started the overclock at, 3.7 gigahertz. So this is already 300 megahertz more than the baseline 3.4 gigahertz frequency. Now, if you're happy with this, all you gotta do is click the stop button and you're good to go. You've already got better performance than what your system is allowed for. But like we noted, we're enthusiasts. We wanna get higher frequencies. So we're gonna allow it to go ahead and continue the overclocking process. So at this point, if you had more applications that were loading, you could just wait. But if you wanna go ahead and start it right off the bat, just click the continue button. So what you're gonna see right here is now a real-time interface of the system automatically overclocking the system. Now keep in mind that while this is software in terms of how you're engaging and uh, monitoring this process, this is happening on a true firmware level. So just like if you were diving into the UEFI and using your keyboard to adjust voltages and the multipliers and any other values, this is all happening on a quote unquote hardware level. So it is software executed, but it truly is occurring on a firmware hardware level in terms of your overclock. Furthermore, and very important is that we are doing actually a lot of optimization um, that isn't necessarily always accounted for when you automatically overclock your system, um, or excuse me, you manually overclock your system. Uh, and the benefit is that we can provide better efficiency, such as that we'll use dynamic voltage technology so that when the CPU frequency goes down, voltage goes down, and when the CPU frequency goes up, the voltage goes up. This helps to make sure that you get an uh, effective level of efficiency and you help to maximize power consumption as well as heat uh, production. So right now you can see if we open up our task manager, we're really loading up that CPU. It's ramping up, all the fans are ramping up because we're hitting it hard. And you can see that we're testing full core stress testing and we're doing actually partial core stress testing. And we're checking each individual element to make sure that it's stable and reliable. And if it passes, then we keep increasing the frequency. You can see right here, we've gone ahead and bumped up to 3.8 gigahertz. So we've gone now an additional 100 uh, compared to the uh, 3.7 that we started at from a preset perspective. Now, you've got also some additional points of information that if you want to be able to reference, it's some cool data. One, you can see the current target temperature. So we can see right here, 71 degrees. This is still pretty cool, especially considering that we're fully stress testing the CPU out and it's helping to showcase the performance of that Kraken X62 cooler. You can see the maximum uh, temperature that's been registered under load. You can see the voltage for your system and you can even see actually power consumption, which is really nice to know kind of getting a sense of idea as how much more power is my system pulling under this overclock configuration versus a standard stock configuration. So a lot of great information that probably you wouldn't normally be accounting for if you were manually overclocking your system or would take you quite a bit more uh, time to be able to open up additional utilities and monitors and logs and things along those lines. While well, that's all consolidated for you and provided in a really easy and clean user interface. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna to continue to allow it to run its full dynamic real-time auto overclocking process. And we're gonna see ultimately how high we can get in terms of our final clock speed for this 1800X. So let's go ahead and let it run through its auto overclocking process and see what we settle up on. So we can see right now that we've given a little bit more time and the system's got to now 3.95 gigahertz. So that's pretty aggressive. We're nearing almost a 600 megahertz overclock and keep in mind that this is 16 threads. So this is a very aggressive type of overclock that we're gonna have for such a highly threaded base CPU. Now, of course, with all Ryzen series CPUs, they fully support overclocking. So with uh, CPUs that maybe have a lower number of threads, you may actually be able to even see higher CPU frequencies when you go about the auto tuning process. So keep in mind that while the overall target ceiling might be a little bit lower uh, for such a high-end CPU like the 1800X, you might even see higher frequencies on lower models like the, uh, take for instance, 1700 or even the quad-core parts. So right now we can see that we've now actually gotten to four gigahertz. Now this is 600 megahertz over our core stock frequency of 3.4 gigahertz. So quite impressive. Now eventually what's gonna end up happening is that during the course of this stress test and it automatically ramping up, the system's gonna crash, but this is entirely okay and this is normal. Essentially it means that we've hit that wall and the system is gonna account for all this and help to come back to a stable final result where it was able to realize uh, that it passed through those stability tests without any issues in comparison to the last result, which was not stable. So we can see right now we've actually gotten to 4.5, excuse me, uh, uh, 4.05, 
So just 50 megahertz shy of 4.1 gigahertz, but the system crashed. So we can see right now the system automatically uh, restarted, but that's normal because essentially we hit a wall. The system was no longer stable at that frequency. So now what is happening is that it's reading essentially those last settings that were defined as being stable. It's applying that back to the board and then we'll jump back into the operating system. Once we get back into the operating system, it's gonna to communicate to us what that final stable result was and we'll essentially have our completed overclock. Now, if you overall distill this down, this has been a pretty short amount of time to be able to get such an aggressive overclock that is stable, reliable, and gives a significant improvement to the overall performance of our system. If you talked about probably trying to do this manually, even somebody like myself, a seasoned enthusiast, that is knowledgeable about all the different aspects regarding this platform and a lot of the different tuning parameters that you have to know in terms of the UEFI, like voltage, um, different multiplier options, and many other parameters, there's a lot of different things to consider, and the amount of time that you would need to overclock the system could literally be hours to sometimes days. But we've been able to distill that down to a much shorter time period. So we're gonna allow the system to go through its process, get back into the desktop, and we'll see what we ultimately settle on. All right, so we now have our system. It's gone ahead and completed that reboot. It's now pretty much finalizing its last, last uh, aspect in terms of loading up the AI Suite 3 utility. It's pulling that rest of the information, so we're gonna get our final end result in terms of what the overclock is. So we can see right here now, uh, it's finishing the last optimization portion, which pretty much was completed during the post. This means that we prioritized all the values for the VRM. Now the Crosshair has got an absolutely very high quality digital PWM with great quality capacitors, power stages, and inductors. So those are all our power components to make sure that we've got a high level of stability and reliability even under heavy load. But when it comes to some of the tuning parameters, let's say how the VRM operates, we're automatically setting all those parameters for you. So you don't have to worry about going in there and manually setting how the uh, power phases are working and how they're uh, loaded and things along those lines. That's all automatically set. So we can see here now that it's finally uh, given to us our output result. So the final uh, stable overclock, and we've now settled actually at four gigahertz. So all the way around a very impressive overclock. When once again, we compare and contrast stock frequency 3.4 gigahertz to now four gigahertz, that's a 600 megahertz overclock. So settling on this overclock, of course, we wanna be able to do a compare and contrast and see how much of a performance increase we've gotten out of our system. So we've gone ahead and utilized ROG RealBench. So this is a free system utility that we provide. You can download it. The links will be in the description, uh, but this allows you to run actually a baseline for your system and also help to validate the reliability of stress, uh, stress test via a stress test that's included within that utility. So you have full benchmarking capabilities and then a full stress test that's built into it. So we've gone ahead and previously run this. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what our numbers come out to. So first up, we're gonna take a look at the stock real bench numbers. So in terms of our core numbers, uh, they're broken down to a couple of different sections, image editing, encoding, OpenCL, heavy multitasking, and then our system score. Now OpenCL is not pretty much gonna be affected at all because that's pretty much all run through the graphics card. But we will see increases on image editing, encoding, and then the heavy, heavy multitasking, which will affect the total system score. So take for instance here, our total system score was 134,219. If we take a look here at the overclocked results, and we'll see that we have now 149,000 66. So that's a pretty substantial increase and you can of course compare and contrast image editing, encoding, and then the heavy multitasking scores. Every single one of those went up quite a bit. So all the way around, I think this is pretty impressive. You could see how easily and effectively we were able to take that unlocked capability of AMD's Ryzen series CPU and even get that much more performance out of it, all in an awesome system that we've already guys uh, show you how to put together here. So that wraps up our quick overclocking insight on how to be able to take advantage of the unlocked nature of these latest generation Ryzen series CPUs, as well as the latest generation of ASUS auto-tuning enabled X370 series motherboards. Now, if you guys wanna check out more content on these motherboards, the builds, and a lot more, make sure to check out the channels that are listed here on the YouTube channel, as well as make sure and subscribe for more content that's gonna come in the not too distant future. So with that, take care, take it easy, and enjoy the rest of your day.